Hey everyone, many of you requested a full stack video about LLMs and this is what you get in this video. Probably something you have not seen before and when you show that to people without tech knowledge, they might think you are some kind of voodoo priest with black magic. I show you how to build an application that changes its UI via voice commands. We can play sounds, trigger effects, change text and background of the app just by talking into the microphone. So here is a little demo. So that's the application. We have to start with a button click of a user because I want to play a sound of what the user is able to do. And that is only possible after a first user input. So let's click on start app. Here you hear the voice. This was recorded before. Also created with AI. And now let's try chat with UI. Hi, I don't like the color of this website. Please make it blue. So request is handled by AI and we can see the background is blue. So I now want the text on this website to be, I like dogs. Let's try one more. I think the website is boring. Please make a nice spin animation. And this also works. So that was the demo. For the front end, we use React, the most popular UI library. And for the backend, we use a fast API server. The workflow is as follows. We record the voice, send it as buff file to the backend. In the backend, we take that file, send it to the Whisper API and get a transcript. We then take that transcript and let an LLM identify an action to take from the text. We then send the data with the action back to the front end. The front end performs the action like changing the background color or the text. We don't really care about the front end since it's written in React and most of you guys are more interested in backend development and LLMs. So all you have to know is that we record the voice in the front end, send it to the back end to our perform action endpoint, and then handle the response to trigger an action, and then we set a new state. So new state is how React handles data internally. The back end is more interesting, so we directly dive in. Okay, this is how the project looks like. As you can see, I'm in VS Code, and here on the left you can see multiple files and folders. The most important folder is the color changer. This contains the React front end. Here is the source folder and here's all of the available code. We won't dive into that because yeah, it's React and most of you guys, like I said, are not that interested in uh, front end development. Then we have got the app.py. This is where the back end magic happens. But yeah, to actually work or interact with the front end, we have to at least start it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So just navigate into the color changer project with CD and then the project and then run npm install first. So this will install all of the required dependencies on your computer and then you run npm run dev. So we use white or wheat to create our server and then the app is available at localhost port 5173. Okay, so now let's go to the app.py and go through that step by step. So first we have to import some packages, like from FastAPI, we have to import the FastAPI class and um, also classes like upload file because actually we upload a file to an endpoint. Then we're gonna import from Pydantic base model and field. This is what we're gonna use for creating a structured output with the chat openai class, which we import here. We also need a chat prompt template. We need course middleware that our uh, app runs on localhost or is able to run on localhost. Then we import openai and also we import from .env load.env because in our .env file there is an openai API key. And then we use load.env to load the openai API key. Next step is to create an action response model where we inherit from the pydentic base model. We have to describe or by writing a doc string. So we have to describe what this is about. This is important for the LLM to detect what uh, actions or, or what this model is for. And then we've got multiple attributes in this model. So we've got action and this is the action which should be performed. And these are the available actions. So we've got background color. So self-explaining, I think, then an animation, then a text which should be changed, sound which should be played. And if anything goes wrong, we also want to be able to return an error. Okay, so we're gonna use that class now in combination with the LLM. But first we're gonna create another custom class which inherits from base model. So this is what we're gonna return from the fast API endpoint. 
Then we create an OpenAI client. This is used for the Whisper API. Then we also create a chat OpenAI instance. This is used for the normal LLM. So we use GPT 3.5 Turbo, use a temperature of zero. And then we combine that model now with the structured output. So the chat model has got a method with structured output where we pass in this pedantic class and the model will now be able to respond in that kind of format. So this is a very nice trick if you need any kind of structured data to use that uh, in combination with the chat OpenAI class. So we use the structured LLM now and we want to combine that with an instruction. And this is what we set in our action system prompt. So you are an action identifier. Identify the action of the user based on the input and provide an appropriate answer. So here are the available fields that the LLM should identify and these match the attributes of our class here. So change color and the background color should be changed to the input of the user. For the animation, we cannot trigger any information or any animation. So we only have got a spin animation and a bounce animation saved in the front end. For change text, we can save it to the user input. Then we also got three files. These are in the public folder of the front end code. We've got a cat.mp3, cow.mp3, and a dog.mp3, which we can trigger just by saying uh, bark like a dog or something like that. And if the action is unknown, set the error to unknown action. So this is what we want our LLM to do. And now we can use the chat prompt template class and use the from messages class method where we pass in a system prompt, which is this action system prompt. And we also pass a human message. And this is the action, which will be the complete transcript initially. So this will be just text and the LLM is able to identify the correct action. Okay, so next step is that we use the language and expression language and we pipe the prompt to the structured LLM. And this is now um, our chat interface. And we're gonna use the invoke method of that interface later where we pass in that action. So we have to provide a dictionary with a key action and then we pass in the initial transcript. But first we're gonna create our application. So we instantiate our fast API class. So we've got an app and now we want to add middleware because we are on localhost and otherwise the backend and the frontend could not talk to each other. Next step is to Per, um, create our perform action endpoint. So the response model is action response. So we just return that from our uh, endpoint. And then here we pass in a single argument, which is an upload file. So we take the input from the user, which then gets sent to this endpoint. And we want to store it on our file system because otherwise we cannot send it to OpenAI. So we're gonna first create a new file path make a directory and store it here. As you can see in this uploaded files directory, which is that currently there's nothing in it because we only need to store this file temporarily. And then we're gonna save this file on disk. And then again, we're gonna read it and then send it to the Whisper API. So this audio file gets sent to the Whisper API and we get back a transcript and the transcript has got a text attribute, which is the text we need for the LLM. Again, we make a print statement for debugging purposes. And then we are gonna pass that transcript text to the invoke method of our agent or our LLM with the structured output. So we've got action here, and then we have to create a dictionary, action is the key, and this is the value. So this gets sent to the LLM in combination with the system prompt. We get, then get back the response. We also remove that file, otherwise we would just have a lot of files on our file system, but we only need it uh, to create our uh, transcript so we don't have to store it permanently. And from that endpoint, we just return the result of the invoke method here. So this is what we get um, from the LLM. So we get the structured output, send it back to the front end, and the front end will now handle it. Okay, as you can see, we wrote a try statement here. So if anything does not work, we want to raise an exception and provide an HTTP exception with a status code of 500 because something in the back end went wrong. After that, we only will run that if name equals main method, import UV icon and then use UV icon to run our application on port 8000. 
So let's run it. We just have to run Python app.py. And then we can see that our backend is now running on port 8000. And if you have a look at the front end, we can only a small look here on port 8000, we can see that we make a post request with Axios uh, with the data, which is the data from the voice input. And then we send that to the backend. And then we take the response and display it here. It depends on what uh, was triggered. So if the response has got this background color attribute, then we will set the background color. Otherwise we set the animation, the text, or we will play a sound. So this is how it's handled in the front end. But like I said, that's not the interesting part of this video. So let's now go to the app. And now just let's say, I want the background color to be blue. Then have a look at this. We can see that's our file upload. And this is the transcript. I want the background color to be blue. Okay, this was also transcript, uh, transcribed, but the LLM is identify the correct action, which is change color and the background color is blue. And this will be now handled in the front end. As you can see, this works. So that's a project. I think that's a very cool and interesting project. And of course you can use it for your own purposes, change it or whatever you want. So if you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye.